coming from a you know a freelancer who's now a full timer but working remotely, what does that look like from a day to day basis? I, I got to be honest, Matt. The, the stress level is so much less because I mean, you know how it is. I mean, every yeah. as a as a freelancer, you throw twenty five things against the wall every month, and you hope two stick. And now it's and and then you also have to deal with people stealing your ideas and yeah. your IP and all that other shit, which happens all the time. So being able to to do you know take the skills that I've learned over the past fifteen years, and basically come into a brand that's not only established but basically reinvent it for the next 10, 15 years of that journey is really, really cool because they're like, you know what you have to do. Yeah. You've seen what you, just go and do it. And so the freedom that I have is fantastic. And um, Well, not, and to I, not have to seek out every single fucking no, paycheck. <clears throat> no, you don't. And that's fabulous. You know, it's like. I've, it, I've, <laughs> I've been at a certain level of anxiety about the next gig the next for so long that it seems normal you know right. what i mean and you know my wife <clears throat> who has been for most of our relationship together a salaried employee and extremely well compensated and very yeah. talented salaried employee she left her salary job at the end of last year and for the last six months has been working freelance and has right. been doing well and has been very very busy and, and working yeah. up until coronavirus at which point her entire job evaporated but right. but her transition from a full-time to a freelance to a free and a very busy one one who had a schedule to look like mine where you have that 90 days booked and then it's like an open ocean of nothing <laughs> yeah, on like, the calendar Ooh. but for her that was like she had this crazy anxiety about that oh, and, and 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 it's not just her i think a lot of people who are used to a salary don't really understand that that constant level of anxiety that happens wow. when you've got three incredibly busy months right and then, and then an open, no. an open sea <laughs> no. of you know and especially like coronavirus when this showed up like my schedule stayed pretty much intact up until mm, like this week <laughs> at which point <laughs> at which point it, it it cleared like moses in the red sea right. <laughs> uh and so you know um and, and she had trouble adjusting to that and so you know first it was thaddeus moving to dubai and right. getting immediately addicted to having a full-time salary <laughs> right to the point where he's staying in fucking dubai <laughs> listen i mean the, the fact of the matter is and you 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 guys can both relate because you know, as somebody that, that owns their own company, you know, and, and having to kind of fight for every every dollar that you make, there are those nights that you stay up and your eyes are just staring at the ceiling. You're like, oh, shit, how am I going to pay a mortgage this month? Or how am I, or how am I going to put money away? Or what is my health insurance going to cost? And anybody that has never been an entrepreneur will never experience that. And that's what I tell everybody. Like all these people that I see right now, they're like, they're not going to pay me enough and I, I deserve this. And I'm like, yo, let me... <laughs> Tell you how this is going to go. Let me tell you about the dicks you're going yeah. to have to eat. <laughs> yeah. they don't but you'll, have, you'll have health insurance to cure you from whatever the dicks give you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, like people just don't get that. And again, it's one of those things where you go, and, and, and I'm sure you get the questions all the time, right? How do I get into this business? And my, you know, my answer is, is has been the same for the last, I don't know how many years, give 10 years of your life away for free. And then maybe, you'll be somewhat successful maybe that's a that, <laughs> that kind of answer turns off more people than the answer i give i give an answer that I, that most people don't like <laughs> which is i had a twitter there's a twitter thread from this morning about it from cuz uh rory reed um who i've never met in person but sounds like the nicest guy ever by yeah. all accounts uh from top gear for a couple seasons yeah really nice guy uh he uh, he shared some video that a guy made who was like a a, a car vlogger yeah. And it was basically about this guy, uh, this guy's like behind the scenes video of like rise to popularity and then just the reality craters. of it. And it just crashed. What's that? He said crater. And then it craters. Yeah, I don't I, I got through about 15 minutes of it. It was very relatable. Fenske was talking about it. A bunch yeah. of these guys are talking about it. And um, there was just like it was the, the reality versus the fantasy kind of thing. And yeah. how, wait, where did you where did we come into this? How do we get to that? Uh, you were talking freelancing. about freelancing. 
Stability. Your, uh, health uh, stability. insurance. Dick sucking. Yeah. I mean, all that. <laughs> all <laughs> all oh, that down shit. that road, huh? All right. I guess it was just about the standard state of anxiety of being yeah. a, of there always be needing to be more, right? There's never, there's never, never enough. enough. There's right. only more. Well, know? there's also right. the, the, the different part of it now is uh, when you were just like a journalist and you were a freelance journalist or whatever kind of job, you were nervous about how you're going to pay for something, but you were like, I need to write a new article to get a new story, find a new thing. Now you have the audience also asking for more. So, right. So Fenske yeah. or, or someone could do like jump a car and your audience goes, great, now what? Now what? <laughs> like three right. cars, five cars. Like you have right. y- your evil Knievel being pushed by uh, people that have access to you through social yeah. media constantly. Sure. So you have two kinds of anxiety. Who's that Scotto that said that? Who's like, when Eddie Jim Connor comes out, they're all just like, when's the next one? He's like, Bro, it just took me like a year to make this. Yeah, no, yeah. people don't care. And I think, you know, this is the other part that people don't get. Like, like I switched careers in my 30s. So, like, I have a, a full business development background. Like, I was a VP at an investment bank for 12 years. So, coming out of that, starting a business, then going into, you know, doing the freelance thing, starting my own business, and then going back to work for somebody, you just see the whole cycle of how things work. And you, you just make that decision. Like, does it work for you at the time? And if it does, God bless you, move forward. And if it does, you stay and you, you keep doing what you're doing, you know? Yeah, I just remembered where I, where I blanked on that because people were asking me how to do the job. And they go, hey, hey, Matt, how do I get your job? How do I do what you do? And my answer, they don't like. Don't. Learn Adobe Premiere Pro. That's my first. <laughs> and no, but it immediately shuts down 99% of conversations. And that's not my intent. My intent right. is to respond with the reality of the situation, which is if you want to be on YouTube, if you are below a certain level and that level's yeah. pretty high, you can't pay an editor, <laughs> period. No. And so the better no. your editing is, the better your videos are going to be. And editors get the least credit for doing the most work and having the most influence over how right. the work looks. Right. And so it was, I, I didn't have start having Zach edit shit until 2018. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and uh, so anything in between 2013 and 18, I just edited my fucking self. And I wish yeah. I knew how to edit, learn in Premiere, how to new, do Premiere before that even. Right. Um, that's the non-glamorous answer. Yours is worse. Yours is be a slave for a decade. Mine is learn a piece of software. Yeah. <laughs> I think mine's a little softer than yours. Yeah, it is a little bit, but that's all right. It is what it is. It's good. No, yeah, it's, the reality it is you're starting a small business and you have to treat it like that from the math you do to the assets you put aside to the skills you need and all of that bullshit. Yeah. So well, I can tell everybody like, yeah. like when we met back in 07, 06, 07. Yeah, six. Right? Six. Like I had my charger and my daily was an E39 M5. Oh yeah, when that I, silver car. That was a nice car. Yeah. Okay. When I when I left my job, I sold my E39 M5 and I bought a $2500 Mercury Villager minivan and that became my transportation. The Villager. I loved the Villager, you know? So, you know, it it's that's but that's what you do. That's the sacrifice you make when you want to hopefully move things forward. I don't know. And I think that villager was an upgrade. You were a boss in that villager. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was, I mean, you know, here's the thing. And like, it, God bless my wife. You guys both know Asia. Like she just runs with it. And we came to love that stupid van the same way we came to love the danger or the battle wagon and all the other stupid things that I've owned over the years. Um, again, you do what you got to do, you know? Well, you and Vinny, you and Vinny are kindred spirits when it comes to a quality beater. Like oh, you yeah. guys managed to find the real gold. That that battle wagon, Roadmasters are pieces of shit, but that was a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did Same you buy? Because, do what you remember? I I, you we bought cars. I bought the battle wagon. The same time that you bought something else. I bought the had- 2008 Honda Odyssey, which was yes. fucking great. I have no regrets. That van was amazing. Yes. That's I actually right. kind of wish I still had it. Yeah, that's right. I, I got rid of it at a time. I think I really needed the money and I mm-hmm. didn't have anywhere to keep it. But it was a, it was such a nice. It was van. a great van. 